Hey everyone, welcome back for another episode in my cave, Corey's cave, my indoor grow room. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. This isn't microgreens at all. This is going to be about uh, some planting I'm doing, getting a jump start on a couple things. I don't grow a ton of things other than the microgreens, but I do have my own gardens and so I like to get a jump on some things. Some of what I like to grow are peppers. I really enjoy peppers. One of the great things about peppers is that you can grow an abundance of them, chop them up and freeze them and have them all winter long. So let me show you a couple things about what I'm doing here. And, and there's another reason I'm showing you this as well, is that I'm going to do an experiment this summer where I'm growing everything in the ground. I had done a lot of hydroponics and I've had some ups and downs with that where I've had problems with, uh, you know, my reservoir runs dry. I didn't realize it had a leak and it, it, it just pumped out all the nutrients and then it, you know, a couple things like that. Nothing big, but if you were watching it, hydroponics is a great way to go. So what I'm going to be doing though, is all of this is going in the ground, except for one of a couple different varieties are going to be done hydroponically. Then we can compare. And I'm showing you this now because I thought you guys might enjoy watching them from the time they were seed to the time they went in the ground. And then also watching what happened between the ones in the ground versus the ones that are done hydroponically. The hydroponic ones are going to be Dutch Bucket. Um, Dutch Bucket is basically, you can take any sort of bucket. In my case, I take five, five gallon pails. And I have a water line that comes in the top. And feeds nutrients into, in my case, perlite is what I use. And out the bottom, there's a drain, and it drains right back to the reservoir. So you, you don't use hardly any water as long as your system doesn't spring a leak or overflow or whatever. So I'll show you all that later. But for now, let's get started on what I have going on here. So I'm growing uh, four different kinds of peppers and three different kinds of tomatoes. And I told myself I wasn't going to do tomatoes this year because they were kind of a, a bit of a pain. But I like making my own spaghetti sauce and it's nice to have fresh tomatoes. I can't help it. I got to grow everything. So what I did is I, I couldn't find any like popsicle sticks or whatever to make nice little things that say what the seeds are. So I made a map. And so this map is going to show what's planted where. And I have a front labeled on it, and then on my actual tray, I also have it labeled front. That was my uh, solution when I, I couldn't figure out how I wanted to label what it was. Normally, I wouldn't really care. I mean, you're going to figure that out eventually anyways. But I wanted to know what sprouted well and what didn't. So, corner of my map, I'm going to do four habaneros right here. And I've got a little Sharpie I'm going to use to poke little holes and then cover them back in. So I'll poke those little holes right now. And I'm going probably a half inch deep. Everybody knows how to start plants. I, I think this probably isn't news to anyone, but ah, what the heck, I'm doing it. I'll record it. So I got those. I am using Magnum Orange Habanero Hot Peppers. And all these seeds I just bought from a local store. It's a nice little store that's local. And uh, it felt really silly because I'm spending like, uh, I don't remember, this was like 250 or something for like a couple seeds. And I buy all my seeds through True Leaf Market online or, or anywhere you're going to buy them online. And I buy them in bulk. And so this amount of seed would cost nothing i mean you wouldn't even care about it but because i'm not growing a lot of this stuff it just doesn't make sense to have a bunch of this seed for me and i also i enjoy supporting local community the local businesses and everything you know they all gotta make money too so i don't mind so let's get started here i plan on putting about two seeds in each hole and because I'm doing such a little amount, even this little packet of seeds, way too many. 
So I'm basically using eight seeds out of that packet. So drop those in. Two more there. Two more there. Two more there. So if I decide I want to grow more habaneros, I've got plenty of habanero seeds in one little packet. So I'm just going to cover those up. And this soil is that pro mix soil that I use in my microgreens, or I just started using. Should be great for doing this as well. It's what it's really for. And just out of curiosity, this says plant in depth is a quarter inch. I went between a half inch and a quarter inch, maybe three eighths. We'll see how it goes. So for the next little section here, I will do jalapenos. Jalapenos. Sorry, the lighting is terrible. And my refrigerator's here. I don't have a ton of room to work. This is a little bit different location than what I was doing when I was doing the overhead sort of thing. Um, the problem with doing it right where I was is that actually blocks the door to get in and out of here. And it just makes it a hassle. So I figured I'd try this spot. It's not a whole lot better, but I can at least get in and out and still have this table set up. So same deal. I'll do two per hole. The reason I do two is even if it's a good seed, you don't always get 100% germination. And something like the peppers, sometimes I will just let, if I get two good ones, I'll just leave them in there and I'll let them grow as two. Um, tomatoes, I might do the same thing. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll take the stronger of the two. So whichever one after you know they get so high, whichever one's doing better, I'll cut off the one that's not doing very well and toss it and leave the one that is doing really well. So let me just cover these up. I had already watered all the soil too, so it's already soaked. Just out of curiosity, these ones also say a quarter inch, and I actually went pretty close to a quarter inch that time. Our next one also says quarter inch, and this is Golden California Wonder Sweet Pepper. So these will ripen up to be a nice yellow pepper, which I enjoy. Put some whole holes in here. You can just use your pinky if you want, or whatever finger, or whatever. This works pretty good. Just had an interesting comment on uh, YouTube from one of the people that watched my video I put out early this morning about the fava bean. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. But uh, he was saying he ordered some fava bean as well, but his he got from uh, from Mums, which is another really popular online seed company, and that his bean was a lot smaller than the beans that I used. And if you watch that video, you'll see that those beans I used were, they're gigantic. It really surprised me. I did not expect the beans to be that big. And so we'll see what happens with them. It's an experiment for me. It's something I, I hope does well. But at the same time, the seeds were so big, I hope I get good yields because you're using a ton of weight per tray. And uh, we can work all that out later about how much weight I use per tray versus how much it costs versus how much yield I get out of it and that and the demand of it will all determine whether or not it's something I continue to carry or maybe I need to get more of it you know get it in bigger quantities so it's cheaper making a couple more little divots here little holes and we will do sweet chocolate pepper so you can see as I'm doing a mix here of, of uh, some sweet peppers and some hot peppers. And if you're growing for just yourself, this is 16 pepper plants, which is plenty of peppers for just you know one family. It's actually enough to give some away. 
And if I have some that I, uh, I don't necessarily need or whatever, I may bring them to one of my customers, my restaurants, that I sell microgreens to. And either give them away or sell them for, you know, cheap money. And they love that. If you can bring just fresh produce that you grew to a restaurant you're already supplying, they're just going to love it. And they're going to use it that night. You know, they'll be really happy to get that. The thing is that a lot of people don't probably realize if you're just getting into microgreens or servicing restaurants in general, restaurants tend to go through uh, distributors to get stuff. So if they're kind of a small restaurant, the distributor is going to make them buy a certain amount of produce. So if that's microgreens, that might mean they have to buy a pound of it. And that restaurant maybe only needs, you know, two ounces of it, maybe four ounces of it. And so that makes it difficult for them to use that because they don't want to waste it because they're just not going to use it. It just doesn't make financial sense to use all that all that stuff. So somebody small like me, they they absolutely love it that I'll show up. I have a, a $30 minimum to, to bring you uh, fresh microgreens. They get the microgreens. They were harvested either that day or the day before. At the max, they're maybe three days old. And they can buy a small amount. And so they want to deal with somebody like that. So just keep that in mind if you're going to cut to these restaurants. So the reason I brought that up is also if you're selling something like uh, peppers or tomatoes or uh, beets and radish. And I'm actually going to try to get into some root crops this year to actually to sell. Uh, you know, beets, radish, turnips, whatever, carrots. Is that... You would think that these restaurants already have these suppliers. Why would they want them from you? Well, like I said, they're getting them through a distributor. It's showing up. They have to take a certain quantity. And on top of that, it's probably pretty fresh because it's probably coming somewhat local. But it's not as fresh as somebody like me who just pulled it out of the ground, washed it off for them, and brought it to them the next day. And, you know, like I said, they're getting a small amount. So this... This is uh, that pink boar tomato, and there's literally 10 seeds in this packet. And I'm gonna use I'm gonna use all 10 of them because I only I need eight. If I'm gonna put two per spot, but I'm not gonna hold on to two seeds in a little packet. These better be good, expensive. Can't remember how expensive. Let's see if I can find it on here. I don't know. They were probably 250 or whatever, but for 10 seeds. So put two of those and a couple holes here. And then I'll drop in an extra one and a in a couple of them to use all ten. Cover that up. So I hope you guys are uh, enjoying this episode. I know I'm not doing my normal microgreens showing you how to do something. Kind of doing something I needed to do anyways and figured I could ramble. And if you guys stuck around, I hope you're, you're catching a couple little tips like I just told you about. Uh, restaurants not necessarily wanting large quantities that they're stuck with from a distributor. I'll try to keep thinking up other stuff, but I don't really know a whole lot anyways. So these are Roma tomatoes. Same deal. Two seeds per uh, per little pod here. I really like the Roma, and one of the reasons I'm doing this, like I said for myself, is I really enjoy making my own homemade spaghetti sauce, and Roma is the best for that. And from what I found, I'm sure there's other paste tomatoes that may be better, but 
the Roma tomatoes are they're just excellent. There's like no seeds in them. They uh, really fleshy, really easy to to reduce down into a sauce. And then I love to throw some of my fresh peppers in there. And I grow micro basil, and so you can throw micro basil in the sauce if you want. It's all good. I love I love making fresh food. As you can tell probably from my uh, wonderful physique, more like skin and bones, is I enjoy I enjoy cooking more than I like eating. I'm I'm the type of guy that wants to have I wanna make something. I wanna make like a huge uh, like say brisket. You know, I'm gonna smoke a brisket on my pellet grill. And I can't wait for it to be done, and then I want to have a couple pieces and I'm good. I just don't have a huge appetite, but I can't wait to try it. Same thing with everything I cook. You know, I can't wait to make all this stuff, but then when it comes time to actually eat it, I, I find I only want a little bit. So it's... I'm not skinny because I diet. I'm skinny because it's my makeup. So these are the celebrity tomatoes. I didn't want to go with hybrids for these. I wanted a slicing tomato. And this is a hybrid, I'm sorry. But I didn't want certain hybrids. There's there's certain hybrids or let me correct myself here, I'm going way off. I wanted a hybrid. I did not want an heirloom. So certain heirloom tomatoes, they're really popular for small growers. They really you know, want to grow something different, you know, something unique, something that's like a really nice tomato. Well, what you'll find is a lot of those heirloom tomatoes, they have issues. Uh, they may be susceptible to blight. They may crack. A lot of them crack. A lot of them are funky shaped. They don't grow into like a nice, perfectly round tomato. Um, They'll grow really odd, and then they'll crack, and then... Uh, they're, they're great, they're good, but if I want to grow a really nice, round, perfect tomato for me, for sandwiches or whatever, I, I tend to lean towards the hybrids. So, that's why I went with that. Alright, so that's it for those for all these pods, and now I have... The pod, this this last section of four here, these are going to be the ones I grow hydroponically. So after these are all grown up, I'll wash all the roots off and I'll plant them hydroponically. And I'll show you that when it comes time. It's going to be a while. But so anyways, I have a Roma, a Celebrity, a Habanero, and a Jalapeno. And I don't know if it's just me or if it's the seeds I had. But I planted some, uh, for two years I used one seed packet of habaneros, or jalapenos actually, and I grew them hydroponically. And these, for whatever reason, jalapenos were the hottest jalapenos I've ever had. I couldn't eat one. I, I could eat a piece of one. I could not eat one of those jalapenos. And I had... Several people that really, you know, were people that loved spicy food, and they all agreed that those were ridiculous. So what I don't know is, was that because they were hydroponically grown that they were hotter? Or was it that batch of seed I had? Or what was it? But we're going to find out this year because I'm growing both hydroponic and in soil from one seed packet. If they're both not that hot... It must have been those seeds I had. And I still have a couple. Funny thing with uh, jalapeno, and some of you guys might do this as well, is with jalapeno, I pick on my kids a little bit, and I call them jalapenos, because if you just read it, as if it was English. It says jalapeno. The problem is my kids might grow up 
think in forever they're jalapenos and maybe order a side of jalapenos and people are going to look at them funny. But that's okay. I'm okay with my kids looking funny a little bit. Hopefully these habaneros are hot. Uh, the last habaneros I grew, even though they were hydroponic, I didn't think they were that hot. I thought those those jalapenos I grew that I was just telling you about were way hotter. All right, so we got those all, all sewed in, all ready to go. Can't wait to start seeing them germinate. It's one of the best parts about growing things for me is watching things grow. It's just, you know, every day you get to look and see something different. I think that's exciting. So, got a tray here. That's going to be my humidity dome. And I'll just keep them covered up. And I'll check on them after, you know, maybe a week, maybe less, just to make sure they're not drying up. But then I'll keep checking on them and I'll, I'll show you guys when they uh, germinate. We get some sprouts show, showing up. And hopefully you get to follow along all the way up until they're fruiting, you know, this summer. So, Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, subscribe, follow along, and definitely comment. I really enjoy it when you guys comment. I almost always will comment back, and we can have a discussion. All right?